welcome back to the scanning electron ion probe microscopy in material characterization. Uh, we have been discussing on different uh, scanning microscopic technique in that uh, in last uh, couple of lectures we have uh, started discussing on scanning probe microscopy in which physical probe is used to scan the surface to get the surface information or surface topology. Uh, in that topic we have uh, begun with scanning tunneling microscope and in the scanning tunneling microscope uh, we measure the tunneling current between the tip and sample. Today we will discuss its working principle uh, in particular how the tunneling phenomena works in scanning tunneling microscope and how tunneling current is measured. In order to discuss uh, the tunneling um, phenomena or nothing but quantum tunneling because here it is a microscopic particle of the electrons. Let us talk about a solid uh, which is made up of atoms and if we talk about atoms then we say it is atomic orbital. If it is an atom we say it is atomic orbital all atom has a And if we talk about a molecule, then let us say it can be carbon monoxide and two atoms. So, we talk about molecular orbital, uh, can be sigma, sigma star type of orbital. Then we have solid, we have several atoms comes together. When several atoms comes together, their energy levels uh, will overlap with each other forming band it can be valence band and conduction band in case of solid. And we here talk about the solid and in the solids we will see how quantum tunneling occurs or tunneling current is measured and in this case also we have a density of states energy density of states for the occupied states and unoccupied states. And again solids, these solids can be divided into three categories as per their electronic properties is concerned such as solid can be insulator. Uh, in case of insulator there is a large gap between the valence band and conduction band. There is a large gap normally it is uh, greater than 5 electron volt 5 to 6 electron volt we say it is a insulator. and here there is no tunneling of the current occurs. Then we can have a semiconductor where there is a small gap between the valence band conduction band which can be used for scanning tunneling microscopy study. Uh, it is to be noted that uh, insulating samples cannot be studied by scanning tunneling microscope. But semiconductor yes we can use semiconductor or semiconducting samples for STM measurements. Then we can also have metal where valence band and conduction band overlap and these metals and semiconductors can be used to examine under STM scanning tunneling microscope. Now, uh, in case of these solid materials we know uh, there is a surface and surface have electronic structure and if we want to take out an electrons from the surface then we have to provide the energy and we know in case of these materials we have a Fermi level E f it is a hypothetical energy levels at which there is a 50 percent probability of uh, the electrons being occupied or being occupied and if we want to take out an electrons from the Fermi levels then we need to provide an energy called work function and work function is denoted by phi work function is equal to the energy difference between the vacuum level minus E f the energy difference between the vacuum level E v. If we provide the energy of this much then we can take out an electrons from the surface of a solid material. 
Now, uh, this work function is nothing but a type of barrier for an electrons to cross in order to go to the other side like we have sample here and we have tip here. If a electron has to go from sample to the tip, it has to cross a barrier and here in case of solid materials, we say the let us say work function is the barrier. If we, we say that this barrier is nothing but a type of a wall, let us say it is a type of a wall, this is the energy, let us say this is x axis, let the barrier is let us say this is a barrier or it is a type of wall barrier. Now, in the microscopic world, in the micro uh, microscopic world and let there is another world is called macroscopic world. In a macroscopic world where particle size are quite big, particle size are big, if a particle has to cross this barrier it has to cross this energy barrier, then only particle can cross. Otherwise, if the energy of this particle is less, then it will be reflected back. If the energy of the particle is less than the this barrier energy or wall energy, then it will be reflected back. And in macroscopic world, the reflection is nothing but 1, if the energy is less than the barrier. But in the microscopic world, where particles are very small size or it is called quantum mechanics. When particles are very small size, we say it is quantum mechanics phenomena will come and here it is a classical mechanics, particle size are very large. Here the particles even though its energy is less than the barrier height, this is the barrier height then also there is a probability that these electrons will pass through this wall and this is nothing but called tunneling, this is nothing but called tunneling. And I can describe like for example, here this is a barrier or wall and an wave is going, it has a probability, probability of passing through it or it has a transmission probability and this transmission probability T is proportional to e to the power minus beta d. Here beta is a constant which depends on the energy of the particle and the barrier wall, barrier height, energy of the barrier height and d is the thickness of the barrier, thickness of the barrier. d is the thickness of the barrier. This is about the quantum mechanics. In case of solid, as scanning tunneling microscope is used on the phenomena of quantum tunneling of the electrons and electrons are the microscopic or small very fine particles, they follow the quantum mechanics. Even though their energy is less than the barrier height, there is a probability of transmi transmission of those electrons or probability of tunneling those in electrons via this barrier even though their energy is less. Uh, we can better describe that uh, using the graph here. Uh, in the first case, in the left one case, there is a solid and there is a vacuum. So, particle has a wave function defined as a psi designated or assigned with a psi. It has a wave function inside the solids and that will exponentially decay as we go above the sample towards the vacuum level. In case of if we bring two solids close to each other with a gap of d and that is called the barrier thickness, then once it crosses the barrier, it will tunnel into the another solid and the particle a particle wave past the barrier. Now, uh, as we know in quantum mechanics, uh, the um, particles can be presented by the wave function psi, I can write uh, as per the time independent spreading the equation, a simple equation we know h psi is equal to e psi. So, which we can write minus 
h cross square by 2 m d psi by d x is equal to e psi that is inside the solid and if it is outside the solids we can write minus h cross square by 2 m d psi by d x plus b psi is equal to e psi that is outside the solid wave function and uh, these have a solution these, these equation have a solution and we can write like here inside the solid I can write let us say psi n or let us say I would write psi in inside the solid I can write here psi in or let us say this is psi 1 and let us say this is psi 2 and this let us say psi 3 this is what the phenomena uh, works in our STM uh, psi in can be have a solution like a e to the power i k x plus a prime e to the power minus i k x and where k will be root over of if we talk with the solution root over of 2 a m e to m e divided by h cross square. Similarly, uh, psi out outside or I can here write uh, psi uh, the psi 2 or psi 2 or it is psi 1 uh, we can write b e to the power i k x plus b prime e to the power minus i k x where k is equal to uh, uh, root over of like uh, 2 m uh, 2 m v minus e here here it will be v is equal to phi that is work function. So, I can write here v minus e or phi minus e divided by h cross square. This is what the psi 2 similarly this is psi 3 inside the solid. So, it has a tra uh, transmission probability of this wave. So, it is nothing but t e to the power i k x where k is equal to root over of or 2 m e h cross square. So, now what we see here this is a transmission coefficient t which uh, can be proportional to we can write uh, transmission coefficient is t proportional to the power e to the power minus 2 uh, k d. to k d. So, here what we see here, here d is the thickness of the barrier and k is this one uh, root over of 2 m e upon h cross square. So, once the n electrons goes via a gap in this case it will be a t one side it will be a sample and one side it is a uh, tip solid can be sample and it can be tip and then electrons can tunnel from tip to sample or via sample to tip if we apply a potential. So, now what you see the transmission coefficient of the electrons is proportional to the power e to the power minus 2 k d and this transmission coefficient is nothing but the tunneling current. So, therefore, we can say uh, I tunnel is proportional to the power proportional to exponential minus 2 k d as I have described previously k is root over of 2 k here I can write phi by h cross square or if I if sorry it is not 2 k k is 2 it is m here it is m. m phi and if we put the value of m, uh, m is uh, mass of the electrons and uh, h cross that is h by 2 pi h is the Planck's constant. If we put this value then it will be point and phi um, point 0.51 root over of if we take the work function in electrons 
then we will have a k is equal to angstrom inverse where k is equal to 0 0.5 pan root over of phi angstrom inverse this one. So, here uh, remember phi in electron volt symbol uh, with a unit of electron volt and here phi is the average work function of this is the average work function of tip and sample this is the average work function of the tip and sample. So, by putting the value of phi which is normally 4 to 5 electron volts depending upon the sample and tip 4 to 5 electron volts normally k come in the range of 1 to 2 angstrom inverse that is called inverse decay length that is also called inverse decay length. So, as you see uh, this k this k is 1 to 2 angstrom 1 to 2 angstrom. So, upon changing 1 to 2 angstrom uh, value uh, we can see that the tunneling current varies uh, drastically. So, important consequence of this equation is that uh, this tunneling current depends on the thickness thickness of the barrier of it, uh, in this cases in STM this barrier is nothing but the gap between the tip and sample because one side we have uh, one side we have sample and then we have a tip here we bring very close and this gap is our barrier. So, electron has to pass this barrier to go from sample to the tip or in opposite direction. So, for a typical value of work function around 4 electron volt in a metal the tunneling current reduces by a factor of 10 for every uh, one angstrom increase in the uh, increase in the d. So, when the tip goes one angstrom up or go one angstrom away from the sample the tunneling current decreases 10 times. So, therefore, a precise control of the tip sample gap can be achieved in this technique because the current is changing 10 times. So, that thus it is a very good vertical resolution and high sensitivity it can give very, very high vertical resolution. And second thing is that uh, that means why I say very high vertical resolution because if I have a mono layer and mono layer of thickness is in the range less than a 0 0.1 nanometer or couple of angstrom then my tip has to go up to maintain the same current or when when there is a when, when there is a steps then what will happen if my tip is going here my tip is going let us say here. So, we can measure a much higher current here compared to here much larger change in the tunneling current as the gap changes in the level of 1 to 2 angstroms. That is precisely very accurately we can measure the step height in the scanning tunneling microscope. So, that that is what the very very high vertical resolution and second thing that if the tip has a single atom as we discussed earlier in our STM uh, the tip has to be single atom then only we can uh, get the information at the atomic level then tunneling current will pass through only one atom only therefore, very, uh, very good lateral resolution because atom by atom we can detect and do the imaging of single atoms. So, so this is the advantage of the scanning tunneling microscopy by measuring the tunneling current. It is important to know that this tunneling current varies exponentially with the uh, thickness distance between the barrier and gap and also it depends on the work function of the material because the k it depends on the k, k is in turn rel related to the work function of the material. So, tunneling current uh, the tunneling current dip, uh, again depends on the bias voltage and the distance between the tip and sample I have not so far discussed the bias voltage again uh, as we change the bias voltage or we increase the bias voltage tunneling current will increase. So, we will see that we do not use very high bias voltage here bias voltage is around uh, 0 to 1 volt bias voltage is used to make the current to flow in one direction. For the imaging uh, 
the bias voltage should be as high as possible to increase the tunneling current certainly because the tunneling current is very small in the pico ampere to nano ampere. So, in order to increase the tunneling current to nano ampere uh, or to measure uh, without much noise with a certain signal to noise ratio, uh, the bias voltage can be increased, but their bias voltage is again very small 0.1 to 1 volt. By applying this bias voltage, we can measure the currents in pico ampere to nano ampere level and that can be utilized for constructing the image. And the tunneling current is yes nano ampere to pico ampere and this requires certainly as the current level is very small here tunneling current, this requires noise free superior electronics allowing the measure such a low, low current. And for that we have discussed that the current amplifier is used a very high quality current amplifier is used which can measure the current of such a low value and this current amplifier is placed very close to the tip end sample. And the factors to achieve uh, atomic resolution certainly should be atomically sharp tip and then having a 3 D piezo scanner moving the tip end sample with a sub atomic precision. So, that uh, piezo electric scanner is used to is used to make the tip go uh, at very small steps uh, in a, a angstrom level, so that uh, we can accurately measure how much tip has gone up or how much tip has come down. Accordingly, we can create the surface topology of uh, the sample. Good mechanical stability certainly we have discussed earlier before a high mechanical stability is required because here the distance between the tip sample is very small and vibration damping platform and certainly low noise current amplifier that can amplify pico ampere of the current tunneling current and allow it to monitor uh, how it is changing across the sample surface. And how to measure the tunneling current? Uh, since this tunneling current is very small, let us I said pico ampere to nano ampere and the bias voltage applied is less than 1 volt. Uh, we normally use high feedback resistance that is what uh, we have uh, discussed earlier, um, uh, high uh, feedback resistance. Uh, in the uh, uh, at least 1 giga, um, giga ohm and the tip is normally biased to uh, biased to 0 volt or it is grounded uh, the tip is grounded. On the other hand bias voltage is provided to the sample from a constant voltage source voltage source. So, we provide bias to the sample either less than 0 volt or greater than 0 volt and then study measure the tunneling current passing uh, tunneling current generated between this tip and sample. Uh, if we talk about the tunneling direction, so if two, uh, two metals comes together, uh, let us say sample and tip, uh, they have a particular work, work uh, web, um, that means uh, work function phi 1 and phi 2. So, uh, if they come closer, certainly uh, the current will not pass. Uh, and then there will be no current passing from either tip to sample or uh, sample to tip if there is no bias, if the V bias is 0 because, because they will uh, align and the Fermi level will align when they bring uh, come closer to each other and without applying a bias current will not flow. But if, uh, if we apply a bias potential, uh, let us say we apply a negative potential to the sample, then, then electrons will tunnel from the sample to the tip electrons are tunneling from the sample to the tip uh, and when electron tunnel uh, from uh, tip to the sample uh, it gives the information regarding the field states of the sample because electrons will always pass or travel or electrons will flow from the field states of the sample or occupied states of the sample to the unoccupied states of the tip. If we apply the pot, um, uh, a negative potentials to the sample, electrons will tunnel from the sample to the tip providing the uh, occupied states information on occupied states, electronic states of the sample. Similarly, uh, now if uh, 
if we apply a negative potential it will electrons will flow from the occupied states of the sample to the tip therefore we, if we want to create an image then we will create we will find an image of occupied states of the sample um, or nothing but the presence of the atoms which are uh, which have filled states if we do opposite uh, like if we apply a, a negative potential to the tip and positive potential to the sample then electrons will tunnel from the filled states of the tip to the unoccupied or unfilled states of the sample or unoccupied states of the sample if we do the opposite then we will see an image of the sample where the atoms are having unoccupied levels. So, the density of states or we can know the electronic structure of the sur surface by choosing or by controlling the voltage applied to either tip or sample. So, here you see here uh, how what happens the tunneling direction uh, if there is no bias then their Fermi level are aligned and current flow the tunneling current do not flow in any of the direction. But if the sample is given a negative potential then it provides it will provide the field states of the sample or occupied states of the sample. On the other hand if, uh, if the tip is negative potential and sample is positive potential then it provides electrons will tunnel from the tip to sample providing the unoccupied states of the sample or the surface of the sample uh, that we examine uh, by, uh, by the uh, scanning tunneling microscope. In this way uh, it provides the surface electronic structure of the uh, sample uh, examined under STM. We can not only uh, do the uh, surface topology, but also the electronic structure of the surface atoms. More examples we will see later and uh, what is the conclusion of the today lecture is that the tunneling current uh, or um, the uh, transmission coefficient which is equivalent to tunneling current which is exponentially depend on the tip sample gap, gap between the tip sample or tip, tip sample distance and which is very highly sensitive and as uh, the current increases or decreases uh, more than or approximately 10 times for every one angstrom change in the tip sample distance, uh, we can uh, control the moments of the tip to a subatomic level thereby getting information high vertical resolution. In addition to that as we are using here uh, the tip which is which has a atoms uh, single atom at, at its apex therefore, we get high lateral resolution and the by applying the bias voltage by suitable bias voltage either positive or negative bias voltage to the sample uh, we can get the occupied states or unoccupied states information of the surface of of the sample surface. These are the two references book uh, for more information. Thank you.